Tony and this is SV Tapatia. And uh, this video is a, a big one really. It marks six years of uh, this channel. Um, six years ago this week, I started lofting the lines to build this boat. Um, and uh, along the way, over those six years, I've shown basically the entire process that I went through to, to build this boat. And we are sat here today uh, afloat in Denmark um, and uh, we're doing sea trials. So, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a hard six years. It's been a lot of work. As you know, one or two things have happened along the way that weren't entirely easy, um, understatement. Uh, but we've got there, we've done it. The boat floats, the boat sails, the boat functions brilliantly. Uh, and, and I have to say, as I sit here now, I'm very, very happy with the way things have gone. It's been a marvellous adventure, the whole build, you know, the thought, the planning that goes into uh, you know, a, a project like that. I bought the plans from uh, Jay Benford, an American designer. The boat is a, a Jay Benford designed 31 foot 8 inch or 31.8 sailing dory, uh, junk rigged, schooner rigged, which means that the aft of the two sails is the bigger of the two. Um, and uh, as I say, it's all turned out very, very well. I'm, I'm very pleased. Now, uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about before we get into uh, the, the, the action of this video. And the first thing is uh, sea trials. What's that all about? So, we launched three or four weeks ago, uh, well, four weeks ago, I think, um, and set off sailing and, and on sea trials. And so I wanted to, to say a few words about what, what I understand from sea trials. And clearly, you know, one of the most fascinating things is how the boat will sail. Um, also with the junk rig, because some of the lines need a bit of tweaking, um, which partly still need doing but um so looking at the rig understanding how she performs feeling the, the the boat in the water and and how she performs that's all part of it but also along with that comes absolutely everything else all of the systems how they work um what the boat's like to live aboard what she's like to cook on what she's like at anchor how she behaves at anchor <coughs> every respect, what it's like to pump the dinghy up on the deck and go ashore. Um, absolutely everything you can imagine is part of that, testing it out and seeing how it works and if improvements are needed. Working out the stowage is a massive thing, ongoing improving stowage. I know, you know, I've improved a lot since we set off in terms of stowage and still working on it though, still going. So it's, you know, it's really just coming to terms with everything. What I can tell you, um, I'm going to come back to uh, some comments I got in the launch video. Yeah, some people suggested that she didn't have enough ballast because, because they saw her being a bit tippy. Now, this is a sailing dory. And if you know anything about dories or you've experienced a dory of any sort, you know, rowing dories, you know, they're, you know, they're quite a fast boat, a rowing dory, but you'll also know that they're tippy. They have this initial instability. Once they go over a bit, they firm right up and they stay there. And that's very much the case of this boat. The ballast is absolutely correct as designed by the designer. I built it exactly as designed, ballast-wise and keel-wise. Um, and if you read comments from other Benford Dory owners, you, you know, it's, it's a trait of the boat. And in fact, I believe it's a trait of all dories that they are, they have an initial tippiness. Now, when this boat's sailing, and I think it's true of all sailing dories, when this boat's sailing, she goes over and then she stays there. She's as firm as anything. If we have, let's say 15, or a bit more knots of wind on the beam, which might be one of the, the tippier parts. She goes over 20 degrees of heel or 25, maybe full sail, you know, and, and then she stays there. She sails solid and wonderfully. So um, the, the tippiness, and there is some, it's undeniable. If I charge around side to side, this boat will start going like that. 
that's undeniable. But but once they healed, they stay there and they're really solid. So it's not lack of ballast; it's the design, the hull. And it's a trait of the dory hull, um, and you just have to accept that if you building one of these expect it if you're interested it's one of the traits they sell marvelously you've got yourself a great boat i tell you um but but the dories are a bit tippy initially and i can also say that you know, at anchor she sits beautifully these boats they sit so well there's absolutely no rolling unless we're charging around inside from side to side, as earlier mentioned. But uh, as she sits at anchor, she's perfect. Really, really beautiful. Um, obviously, you know, a bit of that when the wind's blowing, as, as all boats do, but, but the roll, there is basically, to all intents and purposes, none, which is lovely. So that's that, dealt with that one. Um, I've been watching a couple of videos recently because I've actually here I have Wi-Fi. <laughs> I've been watching a few YouTube videos, and a couple of things came up that I wanted to talk about um, because a couple of things I've seen people say that uh, that I don't agree with um, about the junk rig. Now you might remember way on back in episode two, if if any of you have watched all of them, I waffled on about some books, and one of them I talked about was was this one. Practical Junk Rig. This book has everything that you need to know about how to design and rig a junk rig. And in the video I was watching recently, it was described as being a bit dated. And I'm gonna to leap to this book's defense. There's very, it basically is nothing dated in it, almost nothing. What's happened since this was written is that cambered sails have been developed. That is sails that have an airfoil shape sewn into the cloth. You know, one sided, obviously it flips. Uh, but but camber shape in the cloth between each of the battens. So each panel, and we're going to look at the sails in a bit. Each panel, when filled with wind, is an airfoil. When this when this book was written, they were using flat sails. Now there are other junk ideas around and about, but that's the standard. It doesn't really change anything that's written in this book, apart from if you're building yourself a junk, I thoroughly recommend getting some camber in the sails. Um, from my point of view, I know a lot of junk enthusiasts are enjoying making their own sails. From my point of view, I'm not a sail maker. The sails need to be made well and correctly, I've employed, you know, I, I got them made by a sailmaker, Sebastian from the Tuch Werkstatt in Greifswald. And I'm massively happy, completely happy with the sails they've made. Done a great job of them. And uh, if I were to recommend, I'd recommend getting a professional to make them. Um, so there's that. And the other thing, the only other thing, I so said you can rig the junk rig boat completely from this book. It is, tells you everything you need to know. The only other thing that you could possibly criticize is that the, the dimensions for masts are, shall we say, a bit conservative. The, the dimensions here, there's a table in here that gives you sail area there. I just saw it. I should probably cut that a little bit out. There's these, I don't know if you'll see that, but these charts, graphs, that give you a sail area and um, mast diameter, mast length and diameter in imperial and metric. And they're generally held these days to be a bit on the conservative side. They're, they're, the mast diameters are a bit big. And, um, but you can still use them. Pete Hill, who I think, and don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Pete Hill has probably sailed the most miles of any person in a junk freak boat. And he's also built or converted quite a few boats. He basically says, use this minus 10%. And that's what I've done. The tables from Practical Junk Rig, minus 10%, give you your mass diameters. There are other formulas out there. In my opinion, they're overcomplicated because, you know, I'm a very much an empirical person. And if Pete Hill says this minus 10%, that's fine with me. Some boats driving around out there making a row. Another thing I heard on a video recently, 
was that somebody claimed that junks are slow. Now that is simply not true. What's slow are hull designs. A junk rigged boat, when rigged properly, when the sails are made properly with the correct amount of sail area, will be no faster or slower than any other rig on that hull. Hulls are fast and slow, junk rigs are not. This boat sails marvellously well, as well as it will with any other rig. So, and another idea that's common out there is that they don't go to windward, which is also not true. With the cambered sails, that is the, the big advantage of camber cells. They go to windward as well as anything, frankly. So there we go. I'm, I'm leaping to the defense of a couple of junk rig things. <sighs> Let's cut there. So several, several people have been asking me to talk about the sales and uh, we'll just do that now. Um, basically, we've got a few standard lines that, that uh, you know, some of the same as on any other sail, some are a bit different. So we'll just talk through the lines. And we're gonna start here with the halyard. And there is, there is the halyard fixed to the yard. A Little bit different in that we've got four parts to the halyard. So it's basically a block and tackle system. Makes pulling it up a bit easier. You don't need a winch. And we'll pull it up in a bit and have a look. This yellow and white line here is different in that it comes down from the top of the mast and around, and around the mast underneath the sail. Called the mast lift and holds the, holds the sail bundle up against the mast there. And then the other lines that we've got that are fixed here come to the back of the sail and that's the lazy jacks. At the moment, I've just got a single part lazy jack. Goes to the mast head and back down. But uh, I'll probably change that and make them Y shaped. They're working fine, but, um, but it will probably hold the sail better in stronger winds if it had a second. Sail. So let's pull some sail up and uh, have a look at it. It's a nice calm day today. So it's calm today, so the panels aren't filled, but you get the idea. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven panels. And between each panel is a full length aluminium tube of a batten. The sheets attach to the ends of most of the battens, just not the top two. So you've got complete control over the battens with the multi-part sheet. Around the other side, oh, you'll see here the mast lift, which is this line here, goes under the sail and up to the top. And around the other side of the sails, you see that most of the battens have these lines going around the mast called parels or parrels and they just hold the sail battens hold the sail to the mast and at the moment on the foresail I've just got this hauling line here that uh, just pulls the front of the sail in towards the mast or the bottom of the sail in towards the mast yeah, and here you have it really so you see the multi-part sheet going into everything but the yard and the topmost battens. So six battens have sheets attached to them. They control obviously how far in or out the sail goes. And because we've got no standing rigging, we can get the sail out 90 degrees, no problem. So there's a multi-part sheet. This is still a temporary sheet. It will be renewed when I've got the lengths right. And then walking up to the mast, where well, you see the battens, full length battens. The camber in the circus because there's so little wind, it's hard to see. But when I push it out, you can get an idea of the shape. We've got this simple downhaul, the mast lift that holds the bundle. This one that pulls a fore and aft against the mast. 
and then the red and white ones and the lazy jacks which at the moment just come to the back of the sail there and that is it and it's all very very simple I could put another hauling parrel up at the yard that brings the yard fore or aft against the mast could and probably will would also hold the yard better against the mast so that's probably still to come and now I'll drop it down and they, you know, that's taken one reef and there are two reefs and you see how easy reefing is three reefs four reefs five reefs even six reefs so I'm something of a minimalist when it comes to lines on, on the junk sail and other junk sailors like to control far more aspects of the sail uh, and uh, yeah good luck to them for that <laughs> so I really like to keep it to the minimum if, if I think a line is not necessary you know it's not going on and with that setup you've just seen we're sailing brilliantly we are really sailing well um, it works fine now, France has uh, prepared me a diagram of, of which I'm going to show you and gave me permission to show it to you. It's a, a lovely theoretical di diagram and it's sort of mainly based on what I have. Um, what I don't have that's on this diagram is I don't have a standing parrel on the boom. I've just got the fore and aft hauling parrel, the tack parrel, as he calls it there. I do not have the throat hauling parrel nor the laugh hauling parrel um, and I have no intention of putting the laugh hauling parrel on unless I feel it's needed and at the moment I really don't. Uh, other than that it's a, it's a good accurate representation. On the mainsail I've already put a line on the yard that, that allows me to control the position of that against the mast and also holds it tighter to the mast. That's on there. Uh, the foresail it will come so that, that's you know, still to do so let's do a little bit of sailing to finish this video and then uh, you'll see how it all works <laughs> I just adjusted the throttle linkage yesterday and we're ticking over in, you know, in the lever the horizontal position so that's very, very lovely very lovely indeed um, going to anchor up and get going have a coffee on the way eh the wind forecast changed overnight, so we were planning to leave about 11. That's the way it looked best for the wind, and now it's changed, and uh, it's wise to get going now. What are we going to do? Good, I shall anchor up. motor sailing as you can no doubt here out of this channel it's a fairly narrow buoy channel into this anchorage and now we're going out uh, we've only got a little bit of force up and we're and we're motoring at about 2300 revs i believe doing three and a half knots or so um, and working our way out the channel nicely so, so very very narrow so I need the control of the motor for, for peace of mind really luckily not too much shipping around right we've seen big ships come in here um, yeah 
Going very well, it's a beautiful day, absolutely glorious. So, sailing, full sails. We are doing around the four knots, as you may well be able to read on that. 4.2, that's his now. Uh, in, and our precision wind strength meter says there's that much wind. So that's not too shabby, is it? I'd say not too shabby at all. Wind over the Port quarter, that's a fraction after that. Beautiful. Yeah, so tell us about it, Apes. Uh, we're approaching Ormu. Yeah. Ormu, which is an island off the coast of Denmark. Yep, Danish island. And about five knots we're doing, aren't we? Yeah, steady. Yeah. 4 .8, 4 Wind's on the beam, as you can tell from the wind indicator there. And uh, I spent scanning its turn around and now, whatever the word is. You see Umu up in front of us, heading into what's marked on the chart as an anchorage. We're going really well, really well. So, turned into, turned back to Elizabeth. Turned into a lovely day. We had a bit of rain, didn't we? Yeah. But we, we sailed all the way since yes. we got out of the channel and turned off the. Actually, we turned off the engine a bit before we were out of the channel yeah. and uh, started the whole way. And pretty steady, four knots. Yeah, we, yeah, but it was a little bit where we were a fraction under four and a fair bit when we were well over it. So yeah. It's been a great day. As I just said, I've seen better anchorages. Um, the wind is supposed to turn and come over the island in an hour or two actually, and then for the course of the evening. And that was the point of picking this side of the island really, and hopefully it's going to do that. Hopefully it's going to do that. We're sitting nicely, the boat sits lovely at anchor. Um, but as I say, at the moment it's not ideal. We'll see how it goes. There we go, that's it for this week. I hope all of that has cleared up some, some thoughts for you. Uh, if, if you didn't know already, it's quite possible you knew all of that already. Um, but if not, I hope I've helped. If you've got questions about the rig, I'm happy to answer. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, please put them in the comments or whatever. We'll be sailing next time, I imagine, unless I'm inundated with questions that need answering. Uh, thank you for watching. As ever, a massive thank you to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and via PayPal. And, you know, as I've said before, you you make these videos possible. Without you, it wouldn't be happening. So if you feel like supporting the channel, um, there's a link to the PayPal me in the video description and various places where the Patreon link is uh, from as little as $1 a month. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.